social issues have, at least in the last couple of weeks, redefined the 2012 campaign for president. Just listen to this radio ad. Thanks to President Obama, the 99% of women who use birth control in America could now hear this same message. You see, we scored an important victory when the president stood up for our health care and guaranteed insurance coverage of birth control at no cost. And that obviously paid for by a pro-choice group. But on the other side, Tea Party activists think an issue like birth control could actually help bring their supporters to the polls in November. Nancy Keenan is the president of NARAL Pro-Choice America and Katrina Pearson, a Tea Party activist in Texas and executive director of WatchTheVote.org. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Nancy, these ads are on the air in Denver, in Orlando, Madison, Wisconsin, and Virginia. But are you worried that independent voters who supported the president in the past still aren't sure if they're crazy about this compromise? No, look, the policy that the president uh, put forth this last week is a good decision for women. And it means that millions of women, including nurses, janitorial staff, uh, college professors, will have access to birth control. So this is a win for women in this country, and it's a win for the president, because it's going to draw the contrast between a president who stood with women and their access to, to contraception and birth control, and those that oppose it and want to stand between a woman and her birth control. So absolutely for 2012, this is a president who stood with women. Well, on the other side, Katrina, the Tea Party isn't exactly known for getting involved in social issues. Is that going to change in 2012? Is this an issue you think will kind of reinvigorate your, your supporters, your followers? Well, well, the good news is this really isn't a social issue. You know, even though 54% of Catholics voted for the president in 2008 and they came out in support of health care reform, what they understand now is that an individual mandate by the federal government is, in fact, an infringement upon our rights in this country, not just a particular sect, although they are figuring that out. But yes, this is an attack on freedom in this country as well as religious freedom. So you think as a First Amendment issue, it could invigorate voters. Well, absolutely it could invigorate voters because what the Catholics are seeing is even though well, that the reform was a great idea, they're being impacted and their religious rights are being trampled upon. But what happens to the business owner who happens to have a moral conscience and wants to opt out as well? Are they going to get a waiver? Probably not. And I didn't see the archbishop out there on the South Lawn with the rest of us in 2009 fighting against government health care and the mandate that came with it. There is a way we can address these issues in this country. And there's a way we can constitutionally solve these problems. Government health care and an individual mandate is simply not the answer. Yes, I can is, tell you're dying to yeah. jump in there. <laughs> yeah, Chris, let me tell you that this, uh, the president's solution does not infringe on the religious liberty here. It basically allows women uh, to access birth control uh, with no copay, which means that is an unbelievable pocketbook issue for these women. Now, with regard to the, to, uh, the Catholic uh, faith and other religions, they are not required to cover this under the new rule. 98% of Catholic, Catholic women use birth control, 99% of women use birth control, and even the Catholic population at a, as a whole support the president's policy solution. So this is a bogus argument. Additionally, well, let, let me just add, I, I, we're the not talking about this, a religious bottom, issue here. We are talking about this, the mandate. Somebody's paying for the birth control, whether it's the people getting it or somebody else who's paying for it. This is about health care and insurance coverage for a basic health care called birth control. And, uh, and let's be clear here. These women across the country are going to see the difference between a president who stood with them and have access to birth control and the coverage without a copay when they walk into that pharmacy and the people that are running against this president who want to deny women that access to birth control. We have to women leave it there. Nancy well, Keenan, Virginia Pearson, thanks to both of you. Uh, it's the, who the conversation pays. goes on. Thank you so much.